know, of course, the transformation is not going to, it is happening right now. As we speak, the transformation, I argue that in five years, this transformation will reach its conclusion. And from five to 10, we are going to build a new alternative, a new way of looking at media. Even media as a concept will become a medium rather than a media itself. It's going to be something that connects various trends of thought and the various methodologies of cognitive understanding of reality rather than one dimensional. Therefore, a journalist after five years, a professional journalist has to, in order to compete, to be much more informed, has depth, has contextualization, knowledge. He is closer to be a member of a think tank rather than just a journalist who processes or writes a story because the processes is going to be controlled mostly by smart audience and smart participants who are going to generate a new concept of citizen journalism. The second important element, remember that media so far is Western-centric and it continues to be Western-centric for a while. English language will continue to be the norm in communicating. However, there is a new rising trend within technology of simultaneous translation. And I argue with simultaneous translation and a new concept of crowdsourcing translation, we should start shifting media from being Western-centric to be internationally centered. In this case, people who write articles in Chinese in their own language or those who are writing in Arabic should find that their articles will be translated simultaneously to various languages all over the world. This is good for the cause of journalism. This is good for the cause of knowledge and good for tolerance and understanding people uh, and uh, each other. I don't think that we should, the, if we are thinking of alternatives for a world to come in politics and economy and international politics, I don't think that should be wisdom. In my opinion, it should be universal, global, Therefore, the dialogue should become universal and global. So the newsroom of the future is multilingual, and at the same time, not only multilingual, it is simultaneously fed through different platforms. At the end of your keynote, you talked about the importance of local media. We have a huge shakeout taking place now. So the people who own local media usually do so for an agenda, very likely tied to a government in different parts of the world. Uh, there is a danger here that the only people who can afford to stay in local media, because it's hard to be profitable, uh, will continue to have an agenda. And this is what we're sliding into today. What survives in the local platforms for media? People are complaining about local media. If you go now to most of the Arab countries, they believe that local media is failing them, is not delivering to them excellent content or a medium of dialogue and, this, and, and peaceful you know, build up of consensus. This is why I, I argue that a local TV station that is professional and at the same time respect the priorities of the public will be successful financially because it will become the default channel for the people. There is a huge vacuum and that is the place where people should move to. It will be successful if it is professional. It will not be successful if it continues to be opinionated or serving certain kind of sectors of the society. There is no place for ideological networks. And there is no, of course, there are many. And they will continue to be. But in my opinion, they will not occupy the first rank in the society. There is no place for a TV station that preaches one dimensional way of thinking about life. Because life, as you see it right now, in the streets of the Arab world, is not one dimensional. People have started to appreciate opinions and appreciate diversity, and they would love to see that reflected on the screens rather than only within their circles. Good. Um, would we have had the Arab upri uprisings or the revolution that we've seen without Facebook or without YouTube? Would they, it was really dependent on the media platforms or just basically the social networking tools? They would not have survived without those two tools? The revolutions, of course, existed before Facebook and Twitter and before, before YouTube, and people revolt. You know. However, the way that the revolution took place, the span of it 
the timing and the, sometimes the results of it were heavily influenced by social networks. So I would say we would have never been able as mainstream organizations to cover the revolution without social networks involvement as we did cover it. it would, our coverage would have been much less important and much less uh, uh, you know, uh, diverse. However, revolution would have happened, but it, the cost of it could be higher, the timing could be much more complicated, and the results could be difficult. So definitely social networks added to the revolution a new style and a new way of doing the business. But revolution itself, I argue that the Arab world definitely had to go through kind of change, either if it is peaceful or a gradual, but change has to start immediately, otherwise revolution is imminent. Okay, final question before we invite the panelists up. We have a, a mixed audience here, public relations executives, uh, journalists, and, and executives from different walks of industry. Uh, what's the future of public relations in this sort of networked society that you talked about today? More valuable going forward? Uh, a different sort of public relations executive that relates to the networks outside and within news organizations or not? Uh, networks uh, traditionally started to embrace social networks. So Al Jazeera will launch Facebook and will launch the Twitter account and then we will launch new systems and platforms. And then we started thinking as executives in a moment of time, oh, magnificent, now we own social networks. We, Im we bring the social networks within us. I think this will end into failure. I don't think that well-structured, stream, uh, uh, what you call it, traditional uh, mass uh, journalism could understand the essence of social networks or embody that into its genes. So this is why I say, let us concentrate on the content and enhance our content and go deeper in our content instead of draining our resources, draining the resources in adventures in social media that we cannot live with and understand. It has its own spirit, it has its own people, and I argue that social networks within the technology should become one block and content, professional journalism should be another one and both co you know, could complement each other and they do much better to each other than this kind of intermarriage. This intermarriage might end in divorce. Well, interesting. Very interesting. A nice round of applause for taking the questions as well. We have the audience. It's filled up the room, so that's very positive. If you want to move closer during the question and answer so we can have a, even a tighter dialogue while I introduce our uh, panel of uh, contributors this morning, let me welcome to the stage, and gentlemen, you can all come up at this, uh, at this juncture, Rick Powell is the Chief Communications Officer of Bloomberg, uh, based in New York, Jamal Khashoggi, Editor-in-Chief of the soon-to-be-launched Al Arab News Channel of uh, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, Michael Peel, uh, the Middle East correspondent for the Financial Times based uh, here in the UAE. Francis Matthew, a veteran of the region, editor-at-large at this juncture of Gulf News here in the UAE. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. We're going to uh, get some polling from our uh, esteemed audience as well as we go through this uh, discussion. Uh, Rick, I think it would be interesting to hear uh, if we can start with you uh, from a brand name that serves media and also serves the financial community with the quality content that people rely on uh, day in and day out to make money or not make money. So uh, the number one priority has to be on accuracy for, for Bloomberg. But how has the organization changed as a result of what Wadna was talking about in his keynote address? We were in a period of hyper change with this revolution of social media at the same time. How, how would you suggest that Bloomberg has responded to that and how has it changed as an organization within the newsroom and the, as a financial data provider? Thank you. Um, you know, Bloomberg is in a somewhat unique position for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, um, and there's good and bad to this, but Bloomberg is, you know, we, we don't rely on um, advertising as our business model. We, we have a, another business that in effect subsidizes or or, or is, uh, generates revenues that allow us to invest in our media business. And so, uh, in some ways, we, we have the luxury of, um, certainly in the U.S. context, we, we, we don't have to be uh, super provocative. I mean, much of the cable 
Uh, I think CNN is a, a, a laudable exception to this, but a lot of the dialogue on cable television in the United States has moved towards you know, one political extreme or the other, uh, and that attracts viewers. And the question is, can the sensible middle you know, attract attention and, and attract uh, viewership? Uh, we, we, we don't have to worry about that as much because um, our news is embedded so much in the larger enterprise. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it comes back to something our, our distinguished keynoter mentioned, which is uh, you know, the trust issue. At the end of the day, uh, I think we're rooted in, in, in delivering financial and business news to clients who use it every day. And, and so we've always had, had uh, the, the screen of, is it relevant? Is it true? Uh, we actually have a, a mode in Bloomberg called the Bloomberg Way, which is written. It's a book. It's a, it's a set of standards that are very much about uh, delivering news that people can trust. At the end of the day, I think the biggest issue, and again, the, the keynote address touched on this, is do people trust the content? Do, do they believe it? At the end of the day, there's lots of change in social media and the channels and all these things, but trust is what matters. Do our audiences trust what we're saying? And it doesn't matter what channel we delivered in, whether it's television or newswire or radio or social media, are we producing good content and do our listeners trust? Again, at Bloomberg, we have an advantage of the fact that we're not having to uh, chase ratings at any given moment, uh, and also the fact that we're rooted in financial media, where it was very much empirical, very much about news that we were, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not commenting on politics every day. We're not, we're, we're not out there trying to make uh, sense of, of the world. We're delivering hard news to a very specific audience every day, and I think we're lucky that way. We, we, we're grounded. So... Um, uh, social media and all of these things we're talking about have made a difference, but I don't think we've ever had to stray from our core mission, which is uh, delivering hard, empirical news, good content every day to our audience. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, a number of Bloomberg journalists and the discipline that's inherent in the organization uh, is, as you suggest, uh, very laudable. But uh, going back to our keynotes uh, address here, you have a skill set for the 21st century and uh, a level of context which is very important in the business. So because of the influences we've seen in the uh, evolution of technology, how is the newsroom changing as we speak today to be prepared for this revolution that's taking place technology-wise and the speed to market for information, would you say, Rick? Yeah, well, you know, I'm not a journalist, and so uh, I, I, when we were prepping for this, this panel, that was one of the questions, how's the newsroom changing? And I defer to some of my colleagues here who are journalists to, to probably be better at, at describing this than I am. But to prepare, I went around to some of our senior journalists at Bloomberg and I, and I asked this very question. I said, look, how's, how's the newsroom going to change uh, in, in light of, 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 of this topic? And, you know, the answer was, uh, the first answer, which I think is the honest answer, is we don't really know. I mean, some, one, one of our senior journalists said, you know, we're, when you're in the middle of drastic change, you often don't see where it's going, and, and we can all sit here in the midst of this and try to guess where it's headed. But the truth is, we, we don't really know. Um, but that's a bit of a cop-out answer. Um, the, the real answer I, I got from most people was, uh, look, and that's why I love the concept of newsroom as think tank. Uh, it really struck me when you said that, because that was, in essence, what I heard back from my uh, colleagues in, in the Bloomberg newsroom is, um, you know, look, now we have people who have flexible schedules, they work from laptops, they, I mean, we've got 170 bureaus around the world. I mean, our, our newsroom is, is very virtual in, in, in many ways. I mean, how can something that big and that diverse be a newsroom? It's not. It's a collection of people using technology to, to, do, to do journalism. The, the, the newsroom itself is, is very diffuse, and so it's very different. But the answer I got back from people was, look, yes, it's going to change, and yes, social media changes things, and technology, and the fact that we're spread out around the world, and we work from home, or we work from the laptop on the airplane. But at the end of the day, nothing replaces the think tank of the newsroom. Nothing replaces this virtual... Uh, organization that allows us to talk to each other, to build on each other's knowledge set, to learn from each other. So again, you know, I, I think that we don't know exactly where this is headed, but my colleagues, the journalists that I talked to at Bloomberg said, look, yes, we don't see each other, we don't congregate around the water cooler like we used to, but we absolutely depend on this community, this network of journalists uh, to learn from each other. So I, I guess I, I would defer to my colleagues who are actually in journalism on this, but the feedback I got was the newsroom, while more virtual, the newsroom, while undergoing drastic change, the newsroom is vital to, to the development of, of quality journalism. Good. Thanks very much for fielding that. Jamal Khashoggi, you have a phenomenal advantage here because you're starting uh, this new network, Al Arab. 
uh, from scratch, tabula rasa. Uh, you can take different pieces of this revolution in technology, uh, your sort of context as a senior journalist, and put it in a new framework for a new sort of network. How is it uh, affecting the way you're structuring a new network today? Oh, yes, it's a g great deal. Uh, it's, it's easy for me to say that when we start uh, setting up the channel, I will hire uh, a new media manager. The, in the same day, we hire somebody for uh, programming. Okay, that's easy to say, but it's really way more complicated than this. Because uh, we are all going now through exploration mode. We are discovering this new system, new ideas. Uh, when uh, you talk to uh, a system provider, he will promise you an integrated system in the newsroom. But that integrated system it is not final. It is not like the system we get, uh, we, we learned how to use with Reuters and AFP, and, uh, which had developed over the years, and we get used to it. Now we are talking about uh, not, not an integrated system, but ideas of an of integrated system which are still in evolution. They're still developing, they're still changing. So, so, we, so, so when we are talking about a newsroom and the relation between uh, the traditional media and the new media, we are talking about an exploration not only from our side, we in uh, the, uh, the establishment, the institutions. It is also in the consumer. The consumer is also trying out different ways to receive his news. Sometimes the consumer receives the news from the typical television screen. He sit and watch Al Jazeera or Al Arabiya. Uh, then he will try out getting his news from uh, Facebook or a friend Facebook page or uh, a couple of days later, he will start flirting and tackling with Twitter, and he, he finds Twitter is also a provider of, uh, of information and news. Uh, then he grow tired of that and go back to the traditional mood and go back to the newspaper, to the old-fashioned newspaper. So even the consumer is in, explo in explorations. So basically, I will say things are still in evolution. Nothing is final yet. Uh, ideas are emerging every day. This is a, the other side of that challenge. You get to start with the blank slate, if I could follow up quickly. But it's difficult to break down barriers against brands that are established. How do you break down the barriers to attract an audience as a new brand against an Al Jazeera or an Al Arabiya or any other international brand for that matter? It, it, it is difficult, but we have uh, a potential, uh, we, we have advantage today that we, we, the social media can work to our advantage because the social media can give us access to the mindset of the consumer. What do they want? And then if we can address that, uh, then we can uh, uh, be more representative of the audience. Even though I'm always afraid of something, is to be led by the masses. Uh, the Fox News and CNN dilemma. Uh, Fox News succeeded in America by just going to the masses and see what the people want and being led by them. Is that the role of the media? Is to be led by the public, by the consumer, by the rating? Uh, rating is so important in the business of television in America. Uh, the, 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 the presenter who make more rating will stay, will get uh, ha, ha, more money, while a better presenter might lose because the consumer did not like him. This is something we in Al Arab, I'm sure we, go, we are going through. I have to admit that we have to accept uh, concile with rating and uh, accept with the consumer if we want to succeed. But I think we should put the limit to that, not to become just a popular uh, TV station being led by the masses, but to be rather an, 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 uh, an objective, uh, a, 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 a leading TV station. But there's also uh, two matters which are changing the, the, the scene here. Is the business model is changing. 
to all media, not only to television media. I, I wonder if uh, you have heard of uh, uh, this, this huge company, Procter & Gamble, P&G, planning to cut spending on traditional media and move toward uh, new media. That's going to have a huge impact on entertainment channels, on newspapers. If that happens, it's not going to happen t tomorrow, but it will happen gradually in the next 10 years, and it will phase out their huge spending. You know, Procter & Gamble, they spent, they are, uh, media depends, it is the livelihood uh, of, 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 of media, traditional media. So if that happens, and I'm sure it will happen not immediately here in, in the Arab world, it will happen in, in, in America, Europe, then it will come to us. But that's going to have a huge impact. The other challenge which I'm going to, to, to face, and, and every colleague of mine in the traditional media is facing, is the generation gap. We, the, the ones who have the authority and the money in the traditional media, we are in our 50s, 60s, 70s, some even higher, and we are still in position. And when we talk about integrating and, uh, and converging with the new media, we say, oh, it's easy. Let's hire a 35 years old. But when that 35 years old come and he start talking to, uh, with me, there's a gap between me and him. It's not like uh, old time. So we have to overcome those two difficulties or those two challenges for us to, 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 to be player in the, in, in the scene. I believe Al Arab should start from day one with all uh, type of new media. We must explore all types of new media uh, and we have an advantage that we are not yet established as a, a TV station on the traditional uh, ways, traditional style, just like Al Jazeera. We are starting from scratch, so we must explore with any crazy idea in order to succeed because the consumer is changing and the consumer is willing and it will surprise us that he might receive some of those ideas and accept it and embrace it. Thanks very much for that. Uh, let's go to uh, two panelists that are from the traditional media and, then, and their brands are changing quite rapidly because of the influence that we see today from the Gulf News and from the Financial Times. Um, Michael Peel, let, let me start with you because you're uh, a hardcore journalist day in and day out. Uh, let's take it to the personal. How has your job changed in the last five years as a result of the influence of social networking, but uh, a site that is widely visited in the financial community, which I cover, uh, FT.com? How has it changed your day? How has it changed the makeup of the newsroom? How has it changed your skill set as a result of what we're seeing? Thank you, John. Um, well, I, th I think there are two answers to that question, um, uh, or three. The trite one is it's made the day longer, as it has done for, for everybody. Um, the kind of narrow answer is, as with everywhere else, um, the emphasis has shifted uh, hugely from the printed newspaper to uh, online. And um, uh, that includes, obviously, video, audio, podcasts. Um, we have, a, for example, a, a foreign affairs, international affairs podcast that I contribute to sometimes, um, which is now a regular, a regular thing at, at the end of every week and um, it, it is now very much a part of the job, especially if you're on a big story um, uh, such as a, a revolt in Egypt or Syria or wherever. And, that, um, and in general, on the day to day, there's now um, uh, the stories uh, news stories anyway, the emphasis is very much on online, getting it out um, as quickly as we can. I mean, we're not, we're not a news agency. I mean, we, we, we neither have the resources nor the structures to, to compete with a, a, a Reuters or, or a Bloomberg or, or whoever, but speed is important and we want to get it out, get out news with an FT take as soon as possible. And the emphasis is on doing that and then taking a breath and say, okay, how can we build on this both for online and then for the newspaper later in the day. And, and that's, that's very different from five years ago when the, the web was uh, much less integrated and, uh, in, in the whole operation. And although it was um, seen as important, it was to nothing like the, 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 the degree that it, it is today. Now, having said that, there are exceptions which I think are important to remember. There's a whole class of stories which is not breaking news, but which is uh, the, the deeper stuff, if you like, um, more... Uh, 
original, more analytical, um, based longer term stories, um, which you would have worked on for days or even weeks sometimes, and you work on those much as, as you always did. Um, and um, you know, some days um, when when there isn't breaking news or somebody else is doing the breaking news, I might work on a piece like that, much as I did when I was 22 and first joining the FT. That hasn't changed, except the presentation has changed somewhat because, of course, when you're thinking about how do we present this to our readers, you're not just thinking about uh, how do we present it in the paper, although, of course, that's still extremely important, but how do you present it online? Can we do something else with this, like a slideshow or a podcast, some kind of video, some kind of additional material? Um, so in that sense, everything has changed and, and nothing has changed. Good. Uh, very quickly, before I go to Francis, uh, in this very thick forest, when there's so much content out there, uh, do you find that the brand has been diluted at all, or are people still hunting for quality? Uh, are they shorter pieces, but of high quality, special analysis, mm. that people want to have it stand out from the very thick forest of trees and so much information out there? Yeah, I, I, I think both are true. Um, I, uh, there's, the, there are two things. I mean, they're certainly reflected in my own reading habits. You know, I have a thirst for the instantaneous, what's going on um, on social networks or um, you know, what CNN and others are, are reporting and making sure we're absolutely bang up to date with that. Um, but at the same time, the uh, enormous flow, enormously greater flow of information there is these days, which of course I welcome as a, as a journalist and as a citizen and you know, as a newspaper, you know, this might mean more competition for us in some sense, but you know, that's something that um, we, we welcome it because it would be very hypocritical of us to argue as we do for competition in other industries, but, but not our own. Um, so, so that's all to be welcome. But the, the downside, as, 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 you, as you allude to, John, is that um, more information flow also means there's more rubbish out there as well as more, more quality. And um, I think that um, certainly personally, and I think institutionally, you know, we are looking always to, this is something that, you know, we can still offer to our readers, which is, is very valuable, to assess information that comes in, to, to, to make judgments and as transparently as possible um, to our readers about what we think is most important and what isn't. And then also to give that extra depth and to try to um, say, well, this, this, is, this is the what, but this is the why, and this is the what it will mean. Um, and, and certainly my own reading habits, I mean, have, have changed to the extent that, you know, obviously uh, I'm, I'm on the web constantly in a way that I wasn't 10 years ago, but at the same time I thirst even more for the, the longer, big magazine pieces the New Yorker takes on events that I'm involved in because, you know, it's really important to just step back from, from the, 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 the noise sometimes and just say, well, what, what, what's this all really about and what's the big picture here? Hey, John, John, can I, I, I know course. you've got to get to the guests, but yeah. I want to pick up on this. Something really interesting happened in the U.S. this week that I think was noteworthy, which was uh, we have a magazine, it's a political magazine called The New Republic, which is a 70-something-year-old, very well-known, established political. It's, it's got an ideology to it, but it's, it's a very well-respected, long-form, uh, in-depth type of, of analysis. Uh, it had been suffering uh, as a business and was bought this week by a 28-year-old Facebook founder. And this guy named Chris Hughes, who's going to be a billionaire very soon because he's in his 20s, founded Facebook. And they said, they asked him, why did you go buy this venerable, old, long-form journalism magazine? And he said, because even I recognize as a founder of Facebook the importance of this kind of investigative journalism, this kind of long lead time journalism. Mm. So I just think it's fascinating that a 28-year-old Facebook founder felt the need, and this sort of goes to your point about, you know, are, are we all going to be a Twitter, the Twitter age, are we all going to have a short attention span? Uh, I think there's, it's coming back to us a bit. There, there are people who are recognizing we have to have that kind of journalism. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was a really instructive uh, episode this week. Very good. It's, it's interesting because the same thing happened with Bloomberg with the purchase of Business Week. Business Week almost died as a brand. It was an 80, 85-year-old brand of McGraw-Hill, but it wasn't, the revenue model wasn't holding up even though their online traffic went in, but Bloomberg thought the brand was valuable enough to integrate it into the Bloomberg uh, platform. Speaking of brands, the Gulf News is a very strong brand uh, throughout this region. Francis, uh, you've evolved from the day-to-day editor-in-chief to editor-at-large. Uh, we've heard a number of different opinions this morning. What did you glean out of that and how it's impacted your 
uh, organization as, as we see it today? Well, the, um, the comment Wadah make, made about um, journalists have to go out into the field, I thought was very apposite. And my understanding of a newsroom is not a group of reporters. My, my newsroom is, has no reporters. They're all out reporting. What our newsroom is, is a hub. It's where people meet and manage news. It's where you have the news report, the news editor, the uh, infographic, and importantly, the head of GulfNews.com, the web editor, and also someone who's managing our Facebook and Twitter accounts. They're all meeting in the central hub of the newsroom. So newsroom is about news management. And that's where, as we've said, that that will not die, and that's very important, because that's where we create the balance. Prioritization, as what I'm saying, is the key. That is where we, as a newspaper, and at any of my colleagues here, we should not be driven by someone else's diary. The fact that a government body wants to make an announcement, or the fact that uh, a company has a report, doesn't make it news. What makes it news is, is it relevant to our readers, and do they care? And is it in the public interest? So those kind of discussions need to happen all through the day. And that's what the newsroom is about. As we feed into social media, we work with all the new media, necessarily. I mean, that's, that's what we're about. We, we create content, but equally, people will use it. And we've got two challenges. I think the first challenge is to meet the, the passion of an activist. Out there, there's hundreds and thousands of people who really care, and they drive the news forward by contributing to social media. And we have a problem because we need to be balanced, we need to check, we need to get the other side, we need to make sure that we all sides are represented. And so it's very important from a journalist point of view to create that balanced response, at the same time care about the story. The second one, more practically, is speed. Um, social media is moving much faster than us, and we need to catch up. And this is about all sorts of things. It's about um, the same issues of having to ask the questions of the, of the civil defense. Uh, uh, you know. For example, I mean, a small story, but it, was, it created a lot of noise at the time. There was a rumor going around on, on um, Twitter that, that Burj Khalifa had caught fire. Now, this is an iconic building. Everybody doesn't want the airplane to crash into it. If it catches fire, it's a big story. So what on earth is it doing? Smoke coming out of Burj Khalifa. This was a fact. People were telling each other, left, right, and center. It took us some hours to get hold of the right person to say, no, it's not on fire. It's merely early morning fog wafting around. We then published that story, but we put it onto our website. But equally, of course, we put it into our Twitter and Facebook accounts and kind of stop the rumor. Now that time on that small story took quite a bit of time to get it out there. But that's part of the problem which we've got. Finally, of course, no, it, it's, it's the management of the newsroom is the key. We, we, we need to incorporate all these different threads so the strong content we're all striving for goes out into all these different mechanisms. Great, thanks very much. If you can grab your electronic devices, I'd like to have uh, the, the ones like this. If you've, this is your first time attending, but most have been here for a while, uh, particularly those in the audience. I want to bring up the first question, if I may, and then have some analysis from our, our panel. John. Is the media trusted by the public at large? This is a big question that uh, prevails in, Amer in America today, also in Europe and in here, particularly after what we've seen with the, uh, the, uh, the uprisings in the last uh, 14 months. Is the media trusted by the public at large? So if you agree that it is, it's a one, uh, two, no, and three, you're still not certain in this very rapidly changing environment. You've got about uh, 15 seconds to vote as you see the, the clock finishing there. If you don't have a voting device, because we have uh, three of these other questions, uh, please raise your hand and we'll make sure we get those. And I just want to make sure we have microphones to take some questions for the audience as well, uh, ready to go in the aisles there. So is the media trusted by the public at large? Uh, the tabulation, we have very little that uh, don't have an opinion. 53, nearly 54 percent 
say it is not, which is more striking than anything else. Um, well, Doug, you want to uh, comment on this? We have better than 50% of the audience that doesn't think the media is trusted in this sort of environment. Why would you uh, think that is the case? The, the figure actually is much better than average. You know, Before, during the last few years, you would have asked this question, it would have been even much less people trusting the media. I think based on certain statistics, people would, about 25% only, would have said about three years ago or four years ago that they trust mainstream media. So the challenge posed by social networks and the public to traditional organizations of journalism is enhancing uh, its performance, in my opinion. And at the same time, that will enhance the trust. But in general, yes, we will continue to have a major problem of confidence because, as I said, I think we are uh, dissociating ourselves um, uh, from the uh, public interest of the, public, of the people towards our own uh, interest. Jamal, uh, how do you build a new organization in this sort of environment of historical change that has the trust of the audience from day one? That's not, that's not going to be easy, but uh, you're a very seasoned journalist with a great deal of uh, respect built up over your years. Uh, how do you instill that sort of trust in the organization and convey that to, to the audience day one? Oh, for, for, for a new mediator, just like you know, this 100-day theory for a new president, uh, how does he achieve in the first 100 days? To the new media, is they are waiting for that kind of a news, a, break, a breaking news or an, ex an exclusive or a certain position they take which will identify that new media forever. It will be, if, if, if they succeed, it will stick to it. If they fail, it will be a stigma that, oh, they are this or that. So it is very important from the beginning that for a new media to find the proper time to set its position in the right place, hopefully. Sometimes they do the mistake and they are positioned in the wrong place and, that, and then they will need a good PR firm from here to, to help them out of that awkward position. Good. I hope we'll never get there. <laughs> I, I, I see if I can elicit some different responses from my panelists. This is open to the entire panel. What do you think the audience values today in 2012? Do they value an exclusive interview? Do they value context? Do they value speed to market? What makes your brand stand out today or, or your journalistic coverage stand out vis-a-vis -vis the competition in the marketplace, because this is a big challenge because the next generation of users kind of has ADD. It's a, they, they, they want it quick, they want it fast, but they want quality. Do you want to start, Michael? What do you think your FT reader values today, uh, say, vis-a-vis -vis even five years ago? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about the premise of the question because I, I don't see fundamentally um, this the, the, the essential nature of what people are, are looking for is, is having changed very, very much. And I, I think that, um, that, that, that there's a, a contrast in, 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 in this whole debate between the kind of um, changes of form in terms of how we do journalism, who uh, practices journalism, and, and on, on all the rest of it, and the changes of substance, which is, in a sense, journalism is what it has always been, which is uh, that people... Where, um, thirst for stories which uh, tell them news about themselves, the place they're in, um, and, and something about the, the human condition that ultimately, you know, wh whether these are sort of um, if English town criers or Bedou storytellers in the desert or whatever, that, 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 that hasn't changed so much. Um, and, and I think that in that sense, people are looking what, for what they've always looked for, you know, something that uh, matters to them in some way, whether it's an economic story about uh, something that's going to hit them in the pocket or whether it's something um, uh, enormous like uh, an Arab uprising where you have uh, uh, you know, an, an interview with someone who, who, who has a story of, of, of what happened to their family which tells you an awful lot about what the people of the, the country are striving for and, 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 you, and, and gives you something that, that your reader will, will instantly relate to. So, um, I mean, I, I would just like to add that 
the trust survey, um, uh, as ever, comes out with a depressing uh, majority against the media. Although, as uh, what I said, it could be it could have been an awful lot worse. Um, and and I, I think, but this may sound like a strange thing to say, but part of me actually welcomes this scrutiny um, and su even suspicion because um, I think it's it, entirely healthy that, that people are A, asking more questions of journalists and, and B, holding, hold, holding us to account because, you know, we spend our entire careers holding other people to account. So, you know, I, I do actually welcome this scrutiny and I think, as in any other walk of life, it's, uh, you, you build trust through um, uh, providing stories that turn out to be true and accurate, and 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 also through engaging with people, and this is this is something I've noticed on a personal level over the years. That sometimes I'll write an article that um, this doesn't happen every week, but somebody will write in who said, you know, you, you got this totally wrong, uh, you, you misrepresented this or that or, or, or the other, and quite often. Um, I've engaged with the person, written them back a detailed reply, and in the end, we've, you know, we've come to, to an understanding, and more than an understanding, I actually developed relationships through that, because the, the, uh, the, 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 I gave the person a sense of where I was coming from, and they, uh, they both appreciated the approach, and, and, and we had a sort of proper discussion about it, and they felt like they were taken seriously, and in the end, they, you, you, they actually became someone that, that, that I then developed a sort of source relationship later on, and that, that's happened several times in mm. my career, and that shows the importance of transparency, which cuts through all walks of life and, 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 and journalism no different. Interesting. Rick, you had a comment? Yeah, sure. I, th I think maybe the key word, I, I don't know that the media consuming public thinks of this word, but I think the key word may be authenticity. I think, you know, and I think it comes back to Mr. Kanfar's comment about uh, media has to be people centered, not owner centered or wh whomever's controlling the, the media organization. I think in the age of social media, with the feedback loops, when journalists can, can hear what people like, what they don't like, what was good, what was bad, I think in an age where, you know, think about it, I mean, 50 years ago, uh, many of us got our information from a voice of God, whether it was advertising, which was paid and directed at you, or whether it was from a handful of key media outlets. You, everyone ex trusted and accepted, I'll tell you what to buy, I'll tell you what the best product is. Now, where do you decide what you want to buy? You go onto the internet, you talk to dozens of people, you talk to your friends, you get in your networks. There's more now of this organic, I find my own truth. I don't wait for you to tell me what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And therefore, media that have an authenticity to them, media who feel responsive to their consuming public, uh, I, I think do better. If you're listening to your audience, you understand what they're looking for, you're not speaking uh, at them, but you're speaking with them. I, I think this probably is the model uh, for, for media who are going to connect to their audience better today. Okay. Uh, let's see if we have any questions for the floor. From the floor, we have microphones, I think, circulating. Good. We have a number of hands up. Uh, if we can get one uh, to the gentleman in the front row of the black seats, and then we'll go to this gentleman here. If you can just identify yourself and for the purposes of the audience, uh, try to direct your question to one specific person for time to our panel. Thank you. Thank you. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Arif Al Ajil, Dr. Arif Al Alaqat Al Amma Wal Atisal, Mudir Marikaz Ras Al Khaim, the Dawli Al Tadrib Wal Tatwir. Suari Al Ustad Wadah Khamfar. Wa Qabla Dalik Tawdih. Somebody got me wrong last night when I said I'm going to speak in Arabic. Just to clarify, I spent 10 years in UK, from north, from Manchester to Exeter to Leicester, everywhere. I love UK, I love the English, but I love my country, UAE, more. Arabic is my country language. My question. <laughs> so Ali can أحمل من أسبوعين للأستاذ وضح كنت مشارك في مؤتمر الاتصال الحكومي الذي عقد من أسبوعين في المركز الإعلامي بالشارقة ففي الجلسة الأولى رفعت يدي طالبا التحدث ولكن لم أحظى بالفرصة وكانت رئيسة الجلسة الأستاذة ليلى الشيخلي في الجلسة الثانية وجدت الفرصة ودخلت وسألت الأستاذ محمد كريشان كان رئيس الجلسة ولكن أيضا اعتذر بأسلوبه اللطيف وشخصيته الحلوة 
ان هذا السؤال كان اساسا موجه للجلسه الاولى للاستاذ ليلى الشيخلي فالان اتصور انا امام مدير القناه ومؤسس هذه القناه سؤالي بالتحديد هو نحن كما نعرف ان لما غزا الروس الفضاء كانت هناك رساله يوميه تبث الى الشعب الامريكي من الرئيس الامريكي بأننا نريد ان نصل الى القمر وفعلا في غضون عشر سنوات وصلوا الى القمر بين قوسين بغض النظر حقيقه ام لا ولكن نحن نعرف قوه تاثير الميديا على الانسان وان كل سلوكيات الانسان هي مدفوعه بقناعاته انا ارى من خلال تحليل الشخصي وبناء على نظريه الاجنده سيتنج ان قناه الجزيره وليس السوشيال ميديا حيث ان السوشيال ميديا ما هي الا اداه لتوحيد الاراده الجمعيه للشعوب العربيه ولكن من اسس ومن نظر ومن اوجد القناعه التي اوجدت السلوك هي قناه الجزيره من خلال 15 سنه من العرض والتحليل في برامج مختلفه اتمنى اعرف هل قناه الجزيره هي من الجزيره والا لها اجنده خفيه خارجيه وشكرا شكرا جزيلا لك اعتقد ان ال15 سنه التي ذكرتها كافيه لكي يجيب اي مشاهد على الجزيره عن هذا السؤال يعني المساله لا يستطيع واحد انه يعمل في مؤسسه وانا كنت مديرا للجزيره عملت فيها مديرا ثمان سنوات وقبل ذلك كنت مراسلا فيها واعتقد ان الذي قامت به الجزيره في السنوات الماضيه هي انها انتصرت للمفاهيم الاعلاميه في واقع كان فيه قدر كبير جدا من التعقيد وحاولت قدر الامكان ان تقترب من الناس وحاولت قدر الامكان ان تقدم لهم شيئا افضل بكثير من ما كان موجودا في عالم الاعلام هذا لا يعني ان الجزيره او ان منهجها الاعلامي كان خير كله في كل لحظه احنا ارتكبنا بعض الاخطاء في بعض الاحيان وهذا شيء طبيعي جدا لكن كانت هذه الاخطاء ليست ليس المقصود بها اجندات خارجيه ولا اجندات داخليه القصد منها اخفاء الحقائق او تشويهها انا بعتقد الذي حدث في المؤسسه انها كانت تحاول ان تجتهد في كل مرحله اجتهادات جديده والجديد في كثير من الاحيان فيه خير كثير واحيانا ربما يقع الانسان في اخطاء ولكن في كل له اجر فالجزيره كانت جزء من الواقع الاجتماعي والواقع الانسان العربي والواقع السياسي العربي واعتقد انها كانت تحاول ان تصف هذا الواقع وان تتفاعل معه وقدمت فيه خدمات كبيره والان نحن امام مستقبل الاجواء فيه مفتوحه لمزيد من الانجاز، اتمنى ان يكون لدينا في العالم العربي عشرات القنوات الاعلاميه المهنيه التي تتنافس فيما بينها في تقديم الافضل للجمهور، لان المشاهد العربي سيكون هو الرابح في حال توفرت مثل هذه الادوات، واعتقد ان الجزيره هي فكره افضل من ان تكون مؤسسه، بمعنى انه انا تعلمت في حياتي انه اذا كان لدينا رساله ليكون ولاؤنا للرساله وللفكره افضل من ان يكون ولاءنا للوجو البراند نيم حتى فكره البراند نيم نفسها ربما تكون غريبه علينا في معتقدنا لانه انت تقوم من اجل فكره واعتقد انه هذا الشيء الذي تقوم به ما في مؤامره اطلاقا انا بعدك بذلك يعني على الاقل هذا الذي شهدته بنفسي لم تكن هناك مؤامره ولم نكن جزءا من هذه المؤامره وليست لدينا اجندات خفيه ولم تؤسسنا للموساد ولم نكن عملاء لصدام حسين ولم نشتغل مع اسامه بن لادن ولا السي اي اي فاعتقد انه باذن الله تعالى كنا نحاول ان نقدم شيئا ونسال الله انه يجزينا خيرا ان احسنا وان يغفر لنا ان ان اخطانا شكرا Thank you we, uh, let's distribute the microphones ahead of time we had a question here so we can get the microphone and then there's a question uh, three rows back so we have two microphones just so we can speed up this process please because we only have 15 minutes do you have a microphone there please stand up And we need a microphone to the gentleman here. Uh, now that you have the microphone, why don't you go ahead uh, and we can get the other microphone to this gentleman here very quickly, please. I ask you just to make it a short question to one person uh, so we can move this process along. Thank you.
Yeah, good morning. Assalamualaikum. Let me introduce uh, myself. I'm representative from Indonesia. My company is uh, Biopharma, is a vaccine producer, biotechnology industry. Uh, we come from far away from Southeast Asia to enhance our knowledge from this event and of course to learn from global experts. My question is to Mr. Wadah Kanfar. Because uh, you talk about the transformations of the media and my company now uh, will implement the new media. We have own media. What is the strategy to be heard? Our company, our brand need to be heard because a lot of organization, they are built a new media. What is your strategy? And about the transformations and uh, you said about the people, a PR professional to face this change. What is uh, the next five years, uh, the competency for PR professionals? Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the question. Uh, I'm going to ask Wada to uh, yeah. weigh in, and then Rick, because you're a communications yeah. uh, specialist by nature, it would be good to have you weigh in as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, Please, go answer. ahead. Okay, I think, uh, you know, uh, this is relevant to the previous discussion about what should be done in order to survive, because I think the good is always good, regardless if it is traditional or new or classical or modern. So, integrity is the word. Uh, authenticity, I like it as well. But integrity is very important. It means that you have to be accurate. You have to be relevant to the people. And we have to, as well, establish a proper partnership with the people. Because I think people are smarter than ever and more informed than ever. So we should be able to respect them. But at the same time, we should add to their perspectives much more depth and context. So this is how we can develop a solid brand name in media that could be important. Speed, in my opinion, will continue to be a driving force uh, behind our newsrooms uh, and our websites and whatever we are going to establish because people as well would like to have you on top of the uh, story rather than uh, lacking behind. But we should not sacrifice uh, integrity for the sake of speed uh, or accuracy for the sake of speed because sometimes speed puts us in, in, in a huge uh, dilemma uh, when we would like to compete with others, break the story, and then we discover later on that we did it in the wrong manner. That might uh, actually destroy our credibility. So I prefer sometimes to have the time to make sure that what you deliver eventually is accurate and at the same time relevant and uh, balanced. Thank you. Good. Rick, I, I think to, also to add some value, Wada, thanks for that, uh, to the question is how does a pharmaceutical company from Indonesia relate to this new environment and communicate with the journalist community, stand out, but still provide you know, important context? That's a product that needs to be trusted as well. This whole business has changed radically in the last three years alone. Uh, I think it goes back uh, a little bit to what I said before. I mean, I, uh, before I came to Bloomberg, I was a, a, a PR consultant, and I think what companies are finding and brands are finding these days uh, is really trying to grapple with this new, new environment. We, we've spent our time on this panel appropriately talking about the change in media, uh, but you know, the, the topic for these three days is public relations, and I think public relations has changed drastically. So you know, if, if we're thinking about you know, a pharmaceutical company in, in Indonesia, frankly, it's not much different than any other kind of company or brand anywhere in the world. Uh, and while it's not easy to do, I think I can sum up the difference, which is, uh, again, what I said earlier, Companies and brands have to adjust from communicating to their audiences and transition to communicating with their audiences. Again, the traditional approach for public relations professionals, for uh, companies, was to simply tell their story. Here's what I want to say about my product. Here's what I want to say about my brand. Here's what I want to say to a specific audience. You create messages and you deliver those messages. But the truth is that may not matter anymore. Maybe you have the wrong message. Maybe you've got the wrong audience. Maybe you misunderstand what the audience is thinking. Um, if you heard Harold Burson yesterday, he talked about the, the rollout of new Coca-Cola you know, 15 years ago uh, and why that was such a disaster because they weren't listening to their customers. They didn't know their customers well enough. Again, the internet and social media allow companies every day <laughs> to hear from hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of their customers. The question is, are you listening to them? Uh, do you hear what they're saying? Do you understand the context? 
Uh, do you know what they need? And I think the big change for companies, the big change for PR professionals is to open yourselves up instead of saying, I know best what I want to communicate, but rather, what is my audience saying to me? What do they want? What are they, what are they asking for? And then do I get into a dialogue with them? The reason I think PR is actually um, a discipline that will fare very well in the coming years is because social media uh, means that communications is now about a dialogue. It's not paid content. It's not a big ad put on a billboard somewhere. That works still. But what really works is that engagement with the customer. Uh, so my advice uh, to you is, is simply make sure your company's listening to your customer, you know them, and that you're engaging them online. You're engaging them in various forums uh, and, and communicating with them in dialogue, not just communicating at them. Okay, thanks very much. Before we take this question, we have another, if we can get the microphone to that lady in the middle, and please go ahead with your question. If you can raise your hand so we can get the microphone to you, please, thanks. Please. Sultan Abdullah, Qatar Petroleum PR Manager. My question to Mr. Khajarji, uh, I wish you all the best with your uh, new project for the new channel. My question is, what is your main element uh, to target more uh, people to really watch your channel among the hundred channels those days. This is briefly, uh, it's a big challenge, but I'm sure you have a target uh, that already been decided and all those things, but what's the main element that will attract people to uh, just watch your channel? Thank you. Oh, the television news business is being faced with the, one of the most serious challenges that it is earth shaking. Uh, many people mistakenly say that Al Jazeera was in the conspiracy of toppling Arab regimes. Of course, this is not true. Al Jazeera cannot do that. But if that is correct, Al Jazeera somehow walked to its own uh, dismissal because by creating free Arab environment throughout the Arab world, now Al Jazeera began to lose audience in Tunisia, in Egypt, just simply because Egyptians have free media now. So now they are going, now they are watching their own Egyptian channel, their, their own Tunisian channel. There are more Tunisian watching uh, the national Tunisian channel than ever before. And I'm sure Wallah will agree with me to that. Uh, so that will add more difficulties to us in the Arab channel, on the Arabia, on the Al Jazeera is how to uh, find audience throughout the Arab world. I think that will be very difficult. Uh, just like how the concept of a pan-Arab newspaper disappeared, maybe the concept of a pan-Arab TV station might disappear. Maybe one or two stations will be left, three hopefully. Uh, but each channel, each news channel must try to have a region. Uh, to focus in the region, to become powerful, uh, to, to, to make it a stronghold. Uh, that is the only, uh, th that is the way to survive. Uh, but pan-Arab, difficult, I don't know. It, 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 it is a challenge. We're going to try to be a pan-Arab. We want to be a pan-Arab. We are uh, integrating with a very reputable company, Bloomberg, uh, and I think we are doing the right thing because the theme of uh, future Arab world is business, economy, jobs. That's where Bloomberg and business uh, comes. And we're gonna give much attention to that. That will be the issue in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Algeria, is how to get a better job, how to find, uh, how, how to do business. And, and, and we're gonna serve them with that. But uh, probably we will surrender to be, uh, to, to do that from a Saudi perspective to serve our region, the GCC and Saudi Arabia. Uh, of course, uh, the, the more we acquire in Arab territories, uh, as audience speaking, uh, uh, the, the merrier. Uh, but again, I will just sum it up by saying one of the most challenging things is the concept of Arab, uh, 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 pan-Arab television. That is a very challenging thing. To, uh, to, to maintain. Okay, thank you, uh, Jamal. I do, we have time for two quick questions and two quick answers. We have a microphone there. I ask for brevity, though, please. 
Um, good day, my name is uh, Monica Sanz and I represent Al Jazeera establishment from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The question, unfortunately, is for all the panel. I can't really uh, send it to anyone. Um, we spoke about speed and future as well as the pyramid and credibility and authenticity, etc., etc. Now, as media leaders, did we have to wait for the Arab Spring to happen in order to change the business module and adopt it and say, we're new media now, we're doing this and that? Aren't we meant as leaders and managers to think ahead? Now, maybe to have the new generation communicate the present and make the future, and for the traditional media to take a step back and be in the backstage instead of the control room. Thank you. Okay. Francis, do you want to tackle that? So it'd be interesting to get your thoughts with your experience here. Uh, no, I, I don't think um, it's changed because of the Arab Spring. Media was changing already. It's been changing for the last 15, 10, 5 years. And um, some of the impact of the Arab Spring means that in some countries, obviously changes had to happen quickly. Um, it affects things like regulation and government control. But it doesn't change the essential, which addresses what you're talking about and what the lady from Indonesia was talking about, was that there's no one story. If you've got a particular product or a brand, or you've got a particular story, you need to think who's going to read or see that story. And if you're talking to women or men, it might be different. If you've got a car to launch, you're talking to the community of drivers, you're talking to the community of the banks who are funding that, you're talking to the community of shippers who are moving the cars to the region. So there's no one single story. And I think that's really what we're about, is, is taking the, the single fact and making it relevant. We've all assumed that what we're doing is right, is authentic and all that. The tricky part is making it relevant, and that means breaking a story up into uh, servicing its different communities. Good, thank you. Uh, final question from the floor. Hi, this is Abdul Basit from Khalish Time. Since we are talking about end of newsroom and social media, so my question is to all panelists is that, is there any threat to working journalists or a new entrance because of this new social media? Good. Uh, who wants to tackle? What does you want to finish up here? Uh, do journalists have a future? Do they just get melded with those in the network society or not? Yes, they are going to have, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but what's the makeup? It would be interesting to see what the profile of the journalist is. Is it one with a, a much deeper understanding of the world or not? That's what you were suggesting yeah. before. The journalist will continue to exist, and journalism will continue to exist. However, the new journalist or the journalist who is going to be unique uh, in his perspective is the guy who has much better knowledge about the social uh, cultural fabric of the society that he is reverting to, had good knowledge of history, deep knowledge of political uh, and international political events that are happening around him. He can add value and he can add depth. Uh, the journalist who just sits in front of the table or desk in order to just write a story from news agencies, pitch it together and put it on the screen or the newspaper might disappear. So definitely, journalism will continue, but with much better quality and, and much more uh, depth 